गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम यू ऑल ट्वेंटी सेकेंड बैच ऑफ फिफ्थ स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ राकेश मेडिकल कॉलेज आई एम डॉक्टर शाहगज चौधरी टूडेज वे डिस्कस अबाउट द लॉन्ग केस सो इन द फाइनल प्रॉप एम बी बी एस एग्जामिनेशन देर इज ए वेरियस सेगमेंट ऑफ एग्जामिनेशन सो इन वन सेगमेंट देर इज ए लॉन्ग केस सो एवरीबडी मस्ट राइट ए लॉन्ग केस ड्यूरिंग द पीरियड ऑफ वाइबा टाइम सो इन द इन दैट इंटरवल पीरियड यू मस्ट टेक द हिस्ट्री फ्रॉम द पेशेंट एंड मस्ट राइट इन द पेपर एंड आफ्टर वाइबा एग्जामिनेशन कम्प्लीटेड शॉर्ट केस कम्प्लीटेड लास्टली द लॉन्ग केस आर एग्जामिनेशन इज टेकन सो दो इट इज द लास्टली द एग्जामिनेशन इज टेकन द लॉन्ग केस but it is very important if you don't take the history properly and don't write elaborately and precisely also you don't able to take more mark so be careful about the long case long case history taking and writing so our today's topics of discussion of the long case of the urinary system the renal stone so remember write a history blindly some students they write after memorizing the previous history of taking in the ward just grossly written all the things no you must know about ask questions and know from the patient then you write in the papers so never write a history blindly always take proper history from the patient and examine properly and note it down accordingly this is just a format of presenting your long case on renal stones so we discuss now how we write a history in the paper in case of long case so particulars of the patient it is a very important starting points from that information you can also take know the lot of information of the patient's particulars of the patient like name so first you write the name the name is indicate it is male or female so mr or mrs x or y then you write the age of the patient age also signifies the some diseases are in the newborn some diseases in, are elderly some diseases in a, at any age groups so for that is an age groups is also take from the patient sometimes some patients they don't know his or her age so in that cases you must carefully write the age if a patient having a age of 60 years or 70 70 years you write it at 30 years always the examiner can mind so for that reasons the whatever the age is given by the patient you must realize it compare it with your with your iq and write it in the paper next is sex sex must write the male or female so the disease some disease common in the male some disease common in the female for that is a sex is very important one religion so some uh, disease also related with the religion suppose a patient uh, having the uh, always the five time prayers so there is always friction in the forehead so there is some callosity over there for that is the muslims uh, another one is always most of the muslims are done the circumcisions so some diseases are less in case of muslims some are more in other religion for that is in religion you must write in the paper which religion the patient is occupation so if the person occupation is farmer so farmer if the day laborer you write it the day laborer whatever the work you write it there so that occupation also indicates the also status of the patient also marital status write the merit or unmerit then you write the present address and permanent address this present and permanent address you must 
read carefully because this address is important for future communication with the patient which is not written here nowadays the mobile number also important to note in the paper so that mobile number can you can communicate with the patient for subsequent follow up date of admission date of examination so that two dates always differ because whenever you examine the patient the patient is admitted two or three or four or five days before so it is not an emergency patient it is a cool case so in case of cold case the patient already admitted in the hospital two three four five seven days for that is on the date of the examination and date of admission you must write it there next the starting of the history the chief complaints so we ask the patient what is your main complaint that means to me bangla jete jiggesh korba apnar ki samasya jinno hospital bhorti hoyeche ei jinish ta bhalo kore prashno bujhaye bolte hobe anel rogi bolbe apnar ki samasya amar pathor kidney te pathor amar renal stone ei bhabe eshe bolbe kintu rogire bujhaye bolte hobe ami apne prothom tomar porichoy diba ebong tar pore bolbo apnar kichu prashno korbo apni amake answer guli bolte hobe তখন তার বুঝাইয়া বলবা যে আপনি কি সমস্যার জন্য হসপিটাল ভর্তি হয়েছে তারপরে সে বলবে যে আমার ব্যথা তখন বলে যে ব্যথা কোথায় বললো ওইটা তুমি নোট করলা কত দিন থেকে হচ্ছে এটা জানতে হবে এই জন্য পেন ইন দ্য রাইট যেমন এজ ফর এক্সাম্পল পেন ইন দ্য রাইট লয়েন ফর ফাইভ মান্থস অ্যান্ড সেকেন্ড ইম্পর্টেন্ট থিং ইজ পেসেজ অফ ব্লাড মিক্সড উইথ ইউরিন ফর ওয়ান মান্থ সো রোগী অনেক সময় এলোমেলোভাবে বলবে প্রথম বলবে যে আমার পশে পশে রক্ত যায় তারপরে বলবে যে আমার ব্যথা তখন যে ব্যথা কতদিন বলে পাঁচ মাস তো তুমি সাজানো সাজায় লেখবা যে ব্যথা যেটা বেশি দিন সেটা আগে তারপরে কমপ্লেন পেস ইজ এ ব্লাড মিক্স টু দি ইউরিন ফর ওয়ান মান্থ সো দ্যাট টু চিফ কমপ্লেন্টস ডিকটেটস ইউ হুইচ সিস্টেম অফ দ্য ডিজিজ ইজ সো ইউর কন মাইন্ড সেট আপ টু কনসেনট্রেট on that system and examine properly particularly with that disease symptom related organ so from the chief complaint always write the chief complaint two or three not more than this not all the information needed to write in the chief complaint no according to the severity you write it there history of present illness then you elaborately describe your you this language is the patient language you ask the patient then all the things you know first then you write like this according to the statement of the patient he or she was reasonably well five months back the pain is started five months so before that he become well there is no too much complaint is there for that you write according to the statement of the patient he was reasonably well five months back then he gradually developed pain in the right loin which is fixed and dull aching in nature with no radiation and aggravated by movement especially during climbing stairs and relieved by taking medications so that pain can elaborately we describe here so when it is increases in nature pain severity how it relieves it was not associated with nausea vomiting and fever the pain had no relation with taking food and the pain has become more severe in last 3 days he also complained of passing blood mixed urine with urine there is no history of frequency and urgency of micturations his bowel habit is normal with the above complaints he got admitted in the hospital for better management so you in the present illness you can elaborately describe all the symptoms and some important negative findings like no history of frequency urgency of micturation so and no fever so it indicates the patient does not having any source of urinary tract infection from this history so for that reason you can write it there elaborately in past to present illness <laughs> next then you write the history that means history of some past illness 
is there any history of diabetes mellitus, hypertension, tuberculosis? So you can tuberculosis add here intentionally because the patient having a hematuria, in case of renal tuberculosis, the patient may having some hematuria may present. For their reasons, you write it there, is there any history of diabetes mellitus, hypertension and tuberculosis? Past medical history, it is also important. Because that past history indicates the disease may be recurrent one. So, is there any history of any surgery or any disease for which patient was hospitalized previously? Or the patient some having associated with other diseases like bronchial asthma or hypothyroidism, etc. So, with that past medical history, you must write it there. Ask the patient carefully with some query. Otherwise, willingly, most of the patients, they are not give the history of past illness. So, you must query and elaborately discuss with their past illness. Drug history, also note in the paper, you subsequently, the patient needs some medications, some surgery. So, whenever you need some medications, there is a chance of drug interaction. For that reason, you must know the history of drug running any medication he received or not. If any medication is received, how long he continue it from it he continue. So you must take it there. Because suppose a patient having a ischemic heart disease, he needs to uh, stop the medication before any surgical intervention. Like aspirin, clobidagral, warfarin. So particularly that drug, if any patient received, you must write it there, this drug he or she received or not. If received, if not received, how long he stop it. If previously he received, now he discontinue it. How long? If it is 5 to 7 days, it is sufficient to go surgery without any subsequent complication. So, whenever a patient receives aspirin, clopidogrel, you must observe the patient. If it is continue, you must stop the drug for 5 to 7 days before any surgical intervention. For that reasons, drug history must be written there. Family history. Some diseases are related with the family. Suppose a patient having a tuberculosis, there are most chance of development of tuberculosis in the other family member. So, you ask the patient having any source of tuberculosis in his family. Or if the patient having hemophilia, blood disorder, so it can dictate the patient may having some blood disorder. So you be careful and cautious for subsequent steps of surgical interventions. Personal history. Most of the Bengali people, um, particularly the, the male, they are smokers and some are the betel nut chewer. So smokers and betel nut chewers both are having some complication whenever you're going for surgical intervention with anesthesia. So, for that reason, that smoking is to you must take. If the patient take the smoke, uh, if the patient smoke, you must ask how many steaks he or she received per day. That indicates what is the severity of the smoker is. Next, the socioeconomic history. Ask the patient some questions. By that questions, you can ask the socioeconomic status of the patient. If the patient lives in a mud house or he is living in a building, so that can dictate what about the status and financial condition of the patient is. And what drink of drinking of water he sorts, if you know, if he receives the tubal water, so it is more urban, uh, no, no, semi-urban area. If it is supplied from the supplied water, it is a rural, not in the urban, uh, yeah, rural area, he mostly like uh, live in the uh, rural area. Write accordingly. Immunization history. So, whenever the patient having doing surgery, always you take the immunization history. Particularly, you take about the tetanus toxic immunizations. If the patient having immunization history is completed, so in that case you don't need any booster injections or any any source of immunization before surgery. If there is no history of immunizations, so in that case you can prevent tetanus. You can prescribe the patient some uh, tetanus toxoid 
and tetanus immunoglobulin before surgery. If you suspect the patient having is suspected or there is a chance of risk of tetanus, you can prevent done by active uh, vaccinations, etc. What about the menstrual history? In case of female, you must always inquire about the menstrual cycle. Is it regular or not? And what is the last menstrual period? Whenever you do a surgical operations like a renal stones, if the patient is amenorrheic, if you don't take the history of amenorrhea, if you do an x-ray for detection of the renal stones, you are going to be a crime because the radiation exposure is hazardous for the embryo. For that reason, the ministerialist you must take for your decision making. You can go for abdominal x-ray or not and you can go for surgical intervention at the time of pregnancy. So early pregnancy can miss it. So if you take history and from the ministerial history, what is the last menstrual period? If it is a, a one month or two month gap, you must evaluate the patient subsequently. You must do a pregnancy test. You must do an ultrasonography of the uterus to evaluate the patient having carrying a baby in his umbo. So for that reason, ministerial list you must take. In case of allergy history, you must take because some patient may have been sometimes some drugs previously received and he causing some hypersensitivity reactions. So if the patient have any previous history of hypersensitivity or particular drugs like penicillin, you must omit subsequently. Otherwise, again, there, whenever you uh, inject the patient uh, drugs subsequently, again, there is a flare up of the hypersensitivity reactions. The patient may die due to the antigenative reactions and hypersensitivity reactions. So very difficult to manage. Before surgery, the patient may die due to the drug hypersensitivity reactions. For that reason, allergic history, you must carefully take from the patient or along from his attendants. And you must write it there and you must red mark the point and always inform all the subordinate staffs like sisters, doctors, that the patient having sensitive of penicillin. You must avoid it subsequently. What about the general examinations? So you write in the paper that general examinations. General examination findings depends upon the disease condition of the patient. Whenever a patient having a KK, whenever a patient has malignancy, so always in case of severe malignant diseases, the patient may have been cachectic, ill-looking, idiot-looking, etc. For that is an appearance. From the appearance, you can guess what type severe of the disease is. So you write it their appearance well and good or ill-looking, etc. Body build. Whenever a patient is a bulky one, fatty one, some patients are average body build. So you write it their average or more than average or fatty, etc. Decubitus. Some decubitus of the patient dictates you what is the disease is. So whenever a patient having a pancreatitis, pancreas, pancreas is a retrofitting organ. So during respirations, there is a movement or whenever the movement, there is a the movement or in the pancreas to some extent. So whenever the movement in the pancreas, the patient feels pain. So for rest of the pancreas, some patient having a Mohammedan in positions, take a pillow, press over the belly, and make a pressure over the abdomen and the abdomen become compressed so the pancreas is stand still in position the patient feels less pain so that mohammedan in position can dictate you this patient having most likely the patient having pancreatitis though the patient having a renal stones they may be associated with pancreatitis may be present or some patient is unable to sit in the in the in the chair or the bed so raise his buttock from one side. So that indicates that the patient may have been a perianal abscess or gluteal abscess. So decubitus also indicates that disease location of the patient is. Anemia always is a sincere test because anemia 
is the major enemy for the surgeon because if the patient having a less hemoglobin so there is a pale discoloration of the mucous membrane so whenever there is a less hemoglobin so there is a tissue oxygenation is less there is a less delay in healing so there is a, there is more chance of own disruption own gap for that reason evaluate clinically the patient having anemia or not that anemia is examined in the lower palpebral conjunctiva look there is a capillary if there is hemoglobin is rich so there is a more red in appearance if there is a hemoglobin is less so there is a, there there is a pale in appearance and other side you must examine you look the tongue the papilla is lost or not if the examine that nail the nail is brittle or not and also you examine the palmar surface palmar crease this is very important site of anemia examination in severe anemia the palmar crease color is pale otherwise the palmar crease color is never ever changed so whenever the palmar crease also pale it indicates the patient having mildly reduced hemoglobin and you examine uh, for the anemia you uh, examine the tongue also so papilla loss causing chronic iron deficiency anemia flattening of the tongue surface smooth glossy so it indicates there is a anemia then other investigations are jaundice so these are general examinations general appearance general findings so jaundice look the patient the patient is or another anemia examination is the capillary refilling you press the nail bed so the nail bed become a pale whenever you relieve or draw the pressure the again refilling the capillary it is more rapid or slow it can indicates there is anemia nature the jaundice can examine the patient uh, the eulogy discoloration of the skin and mucous membrane so in case of skin discoloration it takes time see without severe jaundice the skin is not eulogy discoloration so early jaundice can detect in the in the uh, in the conjunctiva and always examine the upper bulbar conjunctiva upper bulbar conjunctiva because not the lower bulbar conjunctiva why upper bulbar conjunctiva is examined examination in that reason is you will never ever can possible spontaneously expose the upper bulbar conjunctiva you look upward the lower bulbar conjunctiva is exposed if look down the upper eyelid always cover the upper bulbar conjunctiva so that bulbar conjunctiva is always covered with the eyelid so there is no exposure of the air or wind trauma in the like the inferior or lateral part of the conjunctiva bulbar conjunctiva so in a wind trauma there is a friction there is some discoloration of the sclera on the lower and lateral and middle conjunctiva uh, bulbar conjunctiva but in case of upper conjunctiva always cover there is no wind trauma so it is a genuine place to the exact findings of the jaundice for that is an always examine the upper bulbar conjunctiva that means you ask the patient look towards the toe and then you pull the upper eyelid other you otherwise you don't able to look the upper sclera so it is the main tool of investigations uh, examination methods be careful about it repeatedly ask in the long case viva why you look in the upper sclera how you examine it always in the every long case every alternate patient sometime ask in the exam so this is the answer what about the cyanosis the cyanosis it is the bluish discoloration of the mucous membrane so that bluish discoloration indicates the patient having oxygen is less carbon dioxide is more so oxygen is less when the lung tissue is unable to oxygen supply the blood vessel with rvc so that less oxygen content is migrated peripherally and for that is on the skin and mucous membrane particularly in the lip and the tongue that are become bluish finger t become bluish so bluish discoloration can dictate you what about the oxygen status of the patient is so whenever you doing the surgery 
Suddenly you look, the fingertips become bluish. So always alert that the patient having sinus is most likely. So you examine the proper oxygenation is going from the machine or not, or the oxygen is off accidentally. You can must examine. And other oxygenation is less or not, we can uh, we can we can easily detect it during surgery, the color of the blood. Whenever the inside the abdomen or anywhere make an incision, there is a bleeding. If the bleeding blood color is uh, bluish, that means not red, then or some want of brownish, then indicates the patient having cyanosis, most likely cyanosis. Alert the anesthetist, look, is there any, any problem to supply the oxygen or not? Be careful about it. It is an alarming sign to detect paraparative cyanosis by looking the blood and tip of the nose and tip of the fingers etc. So there are a lot of types is there. There are two types, central sinusis, peripheral sinusis. These are mostly needed for the medic medical peoples. Our surgical peoples, we are mostly looking for surgical, during surgical procedures, whatever sinusis or not, for our safety, for a smooth recovery of the patient after anesthesia. What about the edema? Edema, usually in a normal individual, there is no edema. So edema is happened in that cases, Whenever the blood is migrated through the peripheral vessels, the egg, the transudate which is go out the vessels fluid, it again go in the peripheral part of the capillary, that means vena sand. So the fluid is again migrated in and there is no edema. So edema indicates the heart may be compromised or the patient is less ambulant. So whenever there is less ambulant of the part of the limb, there is a less contraction of the muscles, less venous return, and there is a more chance of edema development. So generalized edema, we can examine the particularly in the in the leg, just above the medial malleolus. You make a pressure over there by a thumb on the both lower limb. Be careful about it. During examinations, you place your thumb on the both lower limb above the medial malleolus simultaneously. Like 30 seconds, you make a pressure. After then, you suddenly withdraw it and observe the, if there any depression or not. Whenever you make a pressure, if there is sufficient tissue in the extrapuscular component, that tissue is migrated here and there, so there is a depression. So after withdrawal, the fluid is migrated again on the pressure side. So the depression is become elevated to become normal appearance. So it indicates there is a cyanosis. But in a normal individual, when you make a pressure, there is not too much depression there. So this indicates the patient edema. Sometimes some patient having a bedridden patient. So for that reason, ask in the exam, in case of bedridden patient, why do we examine the edema? In that case, the answer is we examine the edema at the back of the sacrum. It is the most dependent part. Whenever we walk, the most dependent part is the limb. And whenever we are lying, the most dependent part is the back of the sacrum. So for that is an edema is examination done in the back of the sacrum, prone the patient, then expose the sacrum, make a pressure over the thumb and examine it. So this is the edema. What about the dehydrations? So dehydration can dictate the hydration status Decreased hydration status is, is diagnosed by dehydration. Increased hydration status is, overhydration is detected by the edema elicitation. So dehydration is elicited by examining the thumb. What about the thumb? Uh, examine the tongue, the dorsum of the tongue. If it is dry, then you suspect that the patient may have been dehydration. Or the patient may be more thirsty. Or the patient uh, said that I have a uh, urine volume is too little amount and high in color. So that also indicates the patient having dehydration. So dehydration can elicit it by looking the tongue and, and ask the question, what about the volume of the urine? What is the color of the urine, etc. And other examination is the skin pins test. That means by the two finger, thumb and index finger in the parietal wall, if you skin and subcutaneous tissue, make a pinch and lift it up and release it. So if there is a rapidly going in a normal position, it indicates there is no dehydration. 
yeah, but in case of dehydration, the normalization is takes time, slowly flatten the skin. For that reason, dehydration is detection by that methods. What about the clubbing? These are looking the finger tips. So there is a window sign, etc. These are mostly needed for the for the medical medicine people. That gross clubbing sometimes indicates the patient having a lung 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 diseases like bronchitis and lung cancer maybe. So these are the findings for general examinations. And colonic is same. There is whenever the patient brittle nail, depressed uh, nail. So this is called the colonic in case of iron deficiency anemia, leukonychia, whenever the yellowish color of the snail, leukonychia, the pulse and blood pressure. These two important point is very important. By writing the pulse always, the pulse always write what pulse, count the pulse and write in the paper. So suppose a patient having a 71 minutes per uh, minute, beats per minute. 71 beats per minute. So if you write it the 71 or 81 or 91, so be careful about it. In that type of writing, in the examiner always asks, what time you examine the pulse? You examine the pulse in one minute or examine the pulse in half minutes? So if you say answer this half minute, so in that half minute, whenever say, I examine the pulse in 30 seconds. So 30 seconds whenever examine, Always, if you write it there, the one, five, three, be careful, your answer is wrong. So always write is a 72, 82, a 74, 84, etc. Round figure. So if you examine the one minute, you can write it there, 71, okay, 81, okay, 91, okay. But if you examine the half minutes, never ever write like this. So, if you accidentally write this 71 per bit, minute, bits per minute, then your answer is I examine the pulse one minute, whole one minute. Then your answer is correct. If you examine the pulse in half minutes, so your answer is wrong. So, be careful about it. And blood pressure. That blood pressure, always write systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. So, systolic blood pressure you suppose in an adult individual 120 to 130 or 140 and diastolic pressure 80 to 90 millimeter of mercury you write it there always write along with the millimeter of mercury be careful about it most of the students miss it they don't write only the 120 by 80 or 80 over 120 etc millimeter of mercury you must write it there so without millimeter of mercury your answer is wrong be careful about it then, accidentally sometimes, some examiner asks, why are you examining the blood pressures? So, we usually examine the blood pressure in the arm. So, whenever ask the questions, your blood pressure measure on the right arm, okay? So, do you examine on the left side? But no, sir. Why no? Then your answer is, I examine the pulse on the both side. So both side pulse is normal in appearance. For that reason, I examine only one side. So some in case of coarctation of the vata, like that, there is some variation on the both upper limb. For that reason, sometimes some marks in the examiners. So why you don't examine the both arm? Why you examine the one hand, one arm? So this is the answer. And the placement of the calf, how you placed, Always practice it. There are two tubes which is connected. One is the meter, another one is the pump. So that two tubes must be situated at the center of the pulse, artery, brachial artery. So this is the position. Then you place your stethoscope. Sometimes some examiners say during examinations, so show me how you examine, uh, how, uh, how you measure the blood patients. So, in that cases, you must carefully, smartly place the calf, inflate the calf, put the steto, and watch carefully. If needed, repeat the pressure. Then, you say your answer. Now, this is the pressure. Suppose, during writing, your pressure is 
120 80 but during examination at the end of the operation the pressure may be 140 by 80 you don't say like previous on 120 by 80 now 120 no so now 130 by 80 it is another question asked why it is pressure is raised so the patient may anxious if i examine the patient you ask the questions so environmental conditions for that reason the pressure may be raised for that reason the pressure which is raised in the paper is not be same during the end of the examinations another one is cooperations so cooperation you ask the questions if the patient cooperately you can uh, relevant answer given so it is indicates the patient is cooperation so ask and communication can dictates you what cooperation of the patient is cooperative or not if the patient is not cooperative you write it is not cooperative so it is a point to there so for that reason i don't write all the informations here because the patient is not co cooperative so it is another it is a negative marking for you because cooperation you don't able to cooperate the patient you have no convincing power for that reason never ever write patient is not cooperative no always write is cooperative then the respiration rate so make a measurement of respiration takes a paper over the chest or abdomen you look uh, over the watch so what the rate is then write it there temperature always write with the thermometer degree fahrenheit degree fahrenheit they most of the time you are right in 97 98 degree don't write the fahrenheit as centigrade no always write the fahrenheit f must write it there before writing the degree you first write the f so there is no missing b practice it so lymph node examination so lymph node examination is a general examination because there is some other associated infection may be present disease is present for so you can examine the superficial lymph nodes like uh, inguinal lymph nodes axillary lymph nodes and the neck lymph nodes thyroid gland at a glance you must in a general examination look there is any swelling if there is any obvious swelling then ask the patient to deglutate then you write that the thyroid gland is palpable so thyroid gland is important because we, if you go for the anesthesia during surgery if the patient is hypothyroid there is a prolonged anesthesia may be given for that reasons you must evaluate the patient clinically before going any surgical interventions so local examination of the abdomen and genito urinary system the chief complaint can dictate you which part of the body is your local examinations so local examinations so your complaint the back pain in the back so that pain in the back most likely in the kidney origin for that is on the examination of the abdomen and genital endocrine systems in inspection so first you write the inspection abdomen in case of renal stone is well the abdomen there is shape is normal most of the respirations umbilicus is inverted in place until and unless there is any ascites or other things there is no visible swelling ulceration discharge sinus and ghost pain scar mark present you write it there so it indicates you can carefully look there is no other abnormalities in the upper the surface hernial orifice is always right are intact hernial orifices are not absent present no always intact or not if there is a hernia there is a protrusion so there is a defect there so it is not intact so if there is no protrusion it indicates the defect there is a hernial orifice is there but it is intact and urinary problem you suspected for that reason you examine the external genitalia in case of male particularly you examine the urethral matus so if the patient having a urethral matus there is a stricture or metal stenosis or some purulent discharge some urethritis indicates and the penis is not deviated so is there any deviation like other hernia or associated with the groin so for that reason penis is not deviated right it there indicates the patient does not having any hernia along with the renal pathology so local examination local examination palpation both the kidney are palpable and not palpable or palatable this type right in right or left renal angle tenderness present or absent you must write it there and in case of testicular pathology suspect along with infection so in that cases you examine the test and write it there both the testes are palpable well normally not the palpable you are write it there is normal in appearance palpable the definitely always there is there means a present there palpable indicates that the test is present in the scrotum so a normal in appearance then local examination so local examination of the abdomen is percussion that means you percuss with the all quadrant so there is tympanic auscultation the bowel sound is present and other systems reveals no abnormality other system that, that means uh, respiratory system uh, uh, that means a uh, nervous system etc 
cardiovascular systems, you write it there, other system, write it in name, no, no abnormality is detected. So, when the examiner will ask you, present your case, it is important thing. Then all the thing, those who are taken from the patient, write it in the paper. So, all the things you can arrange and like a suitable, palatable presentations. So, then present the salient feature in a palatable way. So, without palatable way, if you don't uh, describe, the examiner never ever satisfies. So, your mark become declining. So, palatable presentation needed to practice. If you don't practice, you don't able to palatable presentations. More practice, more palatable. More practice, more palatable the presentation, more mark you can gain. So, what about the salient features? That salient features can elaborately and to the point answer within your salient features. So, like Mr. X, 40 years old, non-smoker, non-alcoholic, non-diabetic, non-motensive, farmer, hailing from Golabganj, Silet admitted to this hospital with the complaints of pain in the right loin for five months, which is fixed and dull in nature with no radiation and aggravated by movement, especially during climbing stairs and relieved by taking medications. It was not associated with nausea, vomiting and fever. The pain had no relation with taking food and pain has become more severe in the last three days. He also complained of passing blood mixed urine. There is no issue of frequency and urgency of micturition. His bowel habit is normal. On general examination, he is non-anemic, non-icteric, non-cyanosed, pulse, 70 80 bits per minute, blood pressure is millimeter mercury, temperature that degree centigrade of Fahrenheit, Respiratory rate is breaths per minute. On inspection of abdomen, genitourinary system abdomen is normal in shape, moves through the respiration, umbilicus is inverted, hernial orifices are intact, testes and scrotums are normal in appearance. On palpation, renal angles are tender or non tender, kidneys are not palpable or palatable, percussion node is tympanic, bowel sound is present, other systemic examination, no abnormalities. So, this is your salient features. Then ask what is your provisional diagnosis or sometime ask what are the positive findings. So in case of positive findings, you only write the positive findings. The patient is anemic, pressure that, pulse that and there is a tenderness on that side. So only the positive findings. So the provision, provisional finding is pain in the right loin. So it is most likely right sided renal stones. So important Differential diagnosis, in the differential diagnosis, never ever write too much, only two or three is sufficient. So, on the right side, there is a kidney and gallbladder. So, your pathology is related with the ureteric stone and gallstone or cholecystitis or pyelonephritis. For that, in the right ureteric stone, the pain in the right loin, hematurate is a positive findings and important negative findings in a, against the point is pain has no radiation. So, it is most likely not a ureteric stone. An acute cholecystitis is pending the right side of the abdomen, particularly in the front. And here it is related to it taking with the foot. Pain is not related to taking foot. Renal angle is tender and hematuria. So it is not a, it is not acute cholecystitis. So pyelonephritis. So pain in the loin. So it indicates there may be pyelonephritis. So it is not pyelonephritis because there is no fever. And kidney is not palpable. So then... The examiner will ask you, how will you proceed now? Then your answer is, that means how will you confirm your diagnosis? That means confirm your diagnosis. So for your confirmation, you need some supportive of investigations. So then your answer is investigation protocols. For diagnosis, you suspect the renal stones. So first diagnosis is 90% radiopic, so plain executable region. Finish. Then additional investigation like ultrasonography. So it can dictate that there is hydronopathy change or not, etc. Then is a more function. You go for the serum creatinine, not the last one, it is serum creatinine. So it is a kidney function. Then you go for the intravenous urography. So intravenous urography, they, it, it, how it helps? It can detect the anatomy, physiology and pathology of the renal tract. So all the information you can guess from your intravenous urography. And nowadays, we are more oriented with the plain CT COB region. So, at a glance, you can look the hydrophobic change, ureteric dilated or not, you can look and easily can diagnose. For that reason, nowadays, we can practice a plain CT COB region. But the plain CT is not the first choice in your level. In your level, plain XA region 
ultrasonography, then serum creatine, then IVU, and lastly, plain CTKOB. The other investigation, if the patient needs some operative procedure for that, is the patient needs the general examination of the investigations like CBC, you may anemia present or not, infection present or not, you can detect urine examination and uh, cultural sensitivity if there is urine infection. So there is a cultural sensitivity, you can start antibodies before surgery. Then you look the blood sugar, the patient diabetic or not, and electrolytes and chest x-ray. And some patient needs to, if the patient is more than 30 years, the patient needs to ECG also. Then your confirmation, your diagnosis after findings of the investigations confirm correlation and final diagnosis is it is the right sided renal stones. Then treatment is discussed previous lectures. So you that are the treatment options you can write according to you can read from the books or lectures. Where is the location? Is it pelvis? It is the calyx or is it a pelvis and calyx extra or is it occupy the whole kidney of kidney functioning or non-functioning? All the information can dictate you what type of surgical treatment needed and age of the patient also. So, then the examiner will ask several case related or theoretical questions from the concerned topic or sometimes non concerned topic may be asked sometimes. So, first thing is they can examine from the general examinations always ask or show some tested like anemia, show me the, how can you elicit the anemia, how can you elicit the jaundice, show me the dehydration, how you examine, then show me the artery dorsalis how you examine the artery dorsalis pedis, show me the, the popliteal artery pulsations, show me the femoral artery pulsations. So if you don't practice repeatedly, never ever able to show in the examination. During examination, there is no scope of hesitations. Smartly, spontaneously movement your bodies and say your answers. Talking, your, your talk is hesitations. It indicates you are not good confidence students. The examination is the final pathway to become a doctor. For that reason, all the examiner, they are assess the individual. He is a stable one and he is a smart one and he is a capable one. That three things correlate your marking and final pass examinations. For that reasons, be practice in your room, in your house, like that COVID period, you, you examine your younger brother or if you're female, you can examine your younger sister, uh, lie in the bed, examine the pressure, examine the pulse, examine the limb nodes. You can practice in your home in that COVID period because you don't able to examine the patient uh, in your hospital now. So during examinations, during examination, you have no sufficient time to practice, practice in the patient body. For that reason, you practice in your home at that time. The other uh, topics like renal stones. So sometimes the question is asked, what are the types of renal stones? So from your theoretical, you can knowledge, you can give the answer, that, 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 that answer. Elicit the renal angle tenderness. Be careful about it. That elicitations always sitting the patient in a sitting posture. Keep the patient in a sitting posture. Then you stand on the back and place the thumb at the renal angle. So before place your thumb in the renal angle, you examine the lateral border of the erector spiny muscles and go up where the bone is attached. It is the lower border of the 12th rib. Then you feel your thumb, place your thumb over there on one side, not at the two sides simultaneously. Because if you place the both thumb on the both side, as the patient feel pain, what type of, which side of the pain you don't able to elicit. For that reason, you examine one by one. First one side, then opposite side. And during examinations, you stand on the back, place the thumb over the back, but you look over the face of the patients. So that facial expressions can dictate you is there an angle tender or not. Then sometimes asking the how can you differentiate spleen from the kidney, particularly the left sided renal swellings or renal stones. So the, it is related to the spleen nearby. So that question is asked how can you examine, how can you differentiate the spleen from the kidney. So in that case, you must lie the patient on the bed and little bit tilted up the left side up. 
then place your hand in the 9th, 10th and 11th rib on the left hand. And the skin and subcutaneous tissue to move forwards. So it helps to loosen the upper abdominal skin and subcutaneous tissues. Then place your right hand just below the left coastal margin. If the hand is go inside the swelling of the rib case, then it indi indicates it is not the splenic solution. A, so, a swelling, it is the renal swelling. So whenever the renal swelling, they go, it directly go up from the back, forward bulging. Whenever the splenic swelling, it is go down towards the umbilicus. So whenever the splenic comes down from the subcutaneous uh, rib case, your hand is not capable to enter inside the, below the, below, below the rib case. But in case of kidney, you can able to introduce your finger in the subcutaneous skin and subcutaneous tissue below the rib case. So it is called the finger insulation test. So the bilateralability of the kidney. So in case of bilateral examinations, you place your left hand on the right side below and right hand in front, ask the patient to breathe. So during respiration, the diaphragm is contracted, press the kidney, go down. So in that case, if the kidney is palpable, both the, both the hands, it is called the bilateral. But on the right, left kidney examination, place your right hand on the back and left hand in front. So this is the difference between the examination of the kidney bilateral. When fever appears, sometimes asks, what it indicates? That means fever means there is infections. Systemic manifestation of the fever. So your answer is most likely the patient having infection like urinary tract infection, particular information from the kidney. So UTI, urinary tract infection. Then, when a kidney will be palpable? The kidney is palpable. When a kidney is palpable, one thing. Another one is, why, why the kidney is palpable in that cases? So, if that case is kidney is palpable, it indicates the patient stones in the pelvis is blocked in the pelvic junctions. The kidney is hydrophobic chains. And when the axis is, what are the conditions causing palpable kidney? Then your answer is hydrophobic kidney, pyonephrosis, renal tumor, etc. Then what is loin? What is groin? So that question sometimes asked, and if you don't read the books, you don't able to answer. So very favorite term loin, very favorite term groin. Groin is very simple thing. It is the junction between the anterior abdominal wall, anterior of the thigh meeting together. This area is called the groin. What is loin? The loin is between the 12th rib and the iliac crest. The space in the back from the 12th rib to the iliac crest. So these are about these are about the long case history. Probably I discussed too much because whenever I started the lectures, I don't able to incomplete. So completeness is my satisfactions, is your satisfactions. If you read and give your answer properly, I can help you subsequently. So thank you very much. Thank you everybody.